Hey guys, BoHD here from How To And More, and today I'm going to give you guys an overview of the recently announced PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, now that it's been a couple weeks since they have officially been announced, and I'll also be announcing the winner of last week's subscribers giveaway, so definitely stay tuned for that. So I'm just going to jump right in, starting with the similarities. Uh, both the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 uh, both have 8-core processors clocked at 1.6 GHz, along with AMD graphics processors. Um, they both have 500 gigabyte hard drives, they both have Blu-ray drives, and they both come with 8 gigabytes of RAM. Now if you want to get into specifics, technically the PS4 is faster with its GDDR5 RAM versus the Xbox slower DDR3 RAM. Also the PS4's CPU version has 18 CU or compute units, uh, which are clocked at 1.84 teraflops, while the Xbox One has only 12 compute units. This technically means Sony's PlayStation 4 outpowers the Xbox One in raw performance. Now as for components, the Xbox One has three USB ports while the PlayStation 4 only has two. Uh, both will have an HDMI out port and both will have a dedicated camera port for the PlayStation Eye and the Xbox Connect. But I do want to note that the Xbox One will come pre-bundled with the Xbox Connect while the PlayStation 4 will not have the PlayStation Eye in the box. Each system this time around will require a $50 a year membership um, for you to play online games. So if you bought the PS3 last year or I guess uh, several years ago now, uh, you might be a little disappointed because it did allow free online multiplayer, um, so you might want to reconsider this time around. But overall I think this is good, for, especially for Sony, because um, it will allow them to provide updates and constant feedback to the online multiplayer experience, and basically it won't allow their system to crash and get hacked for months at a time. Now the price of these consoles varies considerably, I mean the Xbox One will cost around $500 in box. Um, but will include the Xbox Connect, while the PlayStation 4 will cost $400 and will not include the PlayStation I. I think this higher price point will definitely hurt Microsoft in the long run. Um, $100 is a lot more, especially considering these are both high-end machines that cost already a lot of money. $400 and $500 is a lot. Um, but and, you know, if you're a motion gamer, I think uh, you definitely want to consider the Xbox since it does come pre-bundled with the Xbox Connect. Even though technically you can buy the PlayStation I separately for around 70 bucks which still puts it cheaper than the Xbox One. Now since these are gaming boxes of course, we cannot forget that. Um, each console and each company will have their own exclusive games that will be available on launch day. For the PlayStation 4 you have Infamous Second Son, Knack, The Order of 1886, Drive Club, and of course Killzone Shadowfall. For the Xbox One you have Forza Motorsport 5, Rise Son of Rome, Dead Rising 3, Quantum Break, Halo 5, Dead Instinct, Sunset Overdrive, and then you have Titanfall and Project Sparta, which also come out for PC. So as you can see, the Xbox One definitely has more exclusives available at launch day, but quantity doesn't necessarily mean quality, so it's really going to depend upon you, the gamer, um, as to which games you find interesting and which games you guys want to play. Some other games that are coming out for both consoles include Call of Duty Ghosts, uh, Battlefield 4, Destiny, Watch Dogs, and Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Now when these consoles were originally announced, the PlayStation 4 said that it was going to allow used games just like the PlayStation 4, PS2, and even the PlayStation 1 did, where you can use it on any console, um, while the Xbox and Microsoft said they're going to not allow used games and basically have one-time uses for games, um, or at least would charge you to use it on another console. But now that I'm making this video several weeks later with all the facts out in the open, uh, Microsoft has completely pulled a 180 uh, due to all the gaming feedback from all you guys who have been upset with what they previously said. Um, and basically, they will now allow used games without any limitations. They also said they weren't going to constantly make the Xbox check into the internet every 24 hours, and they also said they weren't going to make the Xbox 100% powered on all the time. So now that Microsoft has essentially leveled the playing field, I feel like this might change a lot of minds as to which consoles you guys might be getting later this year. So my question for you guys is, which console do you think is better, the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One? Let me know down below in a comment and you could be featured in my next video and you can also win one of these $10 Google Play cards. This is part of my 4,000 subscribers giveaway so all you guys have to do to enter is just leave a comment on this video answering the question and you guys could win one of these cards. Since this is a subscribers giveaway you do have to be subscribed so keep that in mind. But in one week's time I will randomize all the comments for this video and announce the winner in next week's video. So if you want to enter this giveaway all you have to do is leave a comment down below. Uh, make sure you're subscribed and you could win one of these $10 gift cards. So that about do it for this video guys. The winner of last week's video was this person right here who left this comment. I want to say congrats on winning and thanks for supporting my channel How To and More. 
um, I will be contacting you shortly with the um, $10 Google Play card code. If you guys haven't checked out my last video of the Samsung Galaxy S4, you can check it out right down below um, and see what other people had to say in the comments section. But as always, guys, I'm BoHD from How To and More. Thanks for watching.